shit. Hello, you beautiful misfits. My name is Matt, and this is Pixel Burn, where I take a snarky look at some of the more important, interesting, or irritating things to have happened in the week's gaming news. And if you haven't already guessed what this one's about, then frankly, for you, there is no. No. Oh, shit. What's that thing rebellions are built on again? To say EA has had something of a rough old time this week is like saying Ponda Barber had a slight altercation with an old man at the Mos Eisley Cantina, as people who pre-ordered Star Wars Battlefront 2 got early access to the game ahead of its official release for the masses on November 17th, word quickly got out that it wasn't quite the definitive Star Wars experience fans had been expecting. Not in terms of visuals, sound, gameplay or anything as trivial as that. In fact, as Star Wars games go, DICE have reportedly done a bang up job bringing George Lucas's universe to life, while also addressing the perceived lack of content that afflicted Star Wars Battlefront 1. So long as you weren't expecting to play as Luke Skywalker or his dad, spoilers, anytime soon. DICE's first Star Wars Battlefront, or Swarbat as I'll be referring to it from now on, let you jump into the footwear of six Star Wars heroes and villains from the outset. Luke Skywalker, his sister Leia, again spoilers, their dad, Emperor Palpatine, Han Solo and Boba Fett. No fuss, no muss. As soon as you had the game installed you could jump straight into the game's heroes and villains mode and play as one of these well-known Star Wars personalities. Or run around in some of the other game modes collecting hero tokens to magically transform into one. Point being, all were available from the outset. New hero characters like Greedo and Lando Calrissian's chum in Return of the Jedi whose name I can never pronounce properly, added in later DLC, required you to own said DLC of course, but were instantly available to you once you bought and installed it. Swarbat 2 meanwhile has 14 hero slash villains included in the base game, with two more coming in the free Last Jedi DLC due out in December. But if you're itching to play as Darth Vader or Skywalker Jr from the get go then you've got a fair few hurdles to jump over first. To play as either of those two characters, or Leia, Chewie, Darth Maul, the Emperor and single player protagonist Aiden Versio, you must first unlock them with in-game credits acquired through the game's progression system. Despite Skywalker and Son both featuring quite prominently in the game's marketing materials with little to zero indication they can't be used from the get-go. Swarbat fans were understandably a wee bit miffed about this, particularly those who forked out $80 for the Elite Trooper Deluxe Edition. I could repeat the old caution about how you should never pre-order games, but what would be the point? Nobody fucking listens. Anyhow, said ticked off fans took to sites like this part of Reddit here to express their ire. One specific outburst from a player rather irate at the fact that they can't even playing fucking Darth Vader prompted the following official response from the EA community team. The intent is to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment for unlocking different heroes. This response was to put it charitably, not very well received. At the time of writing, this official response has become the most downvoted Reddit comment in history with a humongous score of around negative 675,000. It's too big to be a space station. Beating the previous record of over 23,000 downvotes held by Reddit user 96Phoenix, who had literally been asking for them. Literally, not figuratively. Now, to play devil's advocate for a moment, a progression system without anything to progress towards, bit of a shit progression system. Plus, it's not like you can't play as a lightsaber swinging hero from the outset. There's Rey and Yoda on the so-called light side of the force, while on the dark side there's Kylo Ren. He's just as cool and awesome as Darth Vader, right? Kinda? Sorta? No, no, Kylo, Kylo, that, that's really not helping Kylo. Alright, devil's advocacy mode off now. That important Star Wars characters were locked away from the get-go might not have irked so many people so much if the progression system was fair and didn't feel like too much of a slog. Which it wasn't, or at least didn't seem to be. To unlock Vader or Luke you had to amass a cool 60,000 in-game credits just for one of them. And regular multiplayer only gives you about 250 credits on average for around 10 minutes of play. People who are way better than me at maths crunched some numbers and calculated it would take players around 40 hours on average just by playing normal multiplayer to earn enough credits to unlock either Darth Vader or Luke Skywalker. Not both, one. Now to be fair, these calculations did not account for the 20,000 credits you received for finishing the single player campaign, which was enough to instantly unlock Aiden Versio, Leia Organa, Emperor Palpatine or Chewie. <laughs> Nor did it account for the credits you could acquire by completing multiplayer challenges like getting 500 kills using a certain character class for example, or the ones you can get from loot boxes, either in big fat stacks or in exchange for duplicate items. Speaking of loot boxes, they can also be purchased through in-game credits and are one of the only sources of the game's much sought after star cards, which come in two flavours, 
boost cards and ability cards. The former enhances your existing multiplayer character, while the latter gives you new equipment and tools to use on the front line. The other source of star cards is crafting parts, 40 of which can be used to construct yourself a brand new virginal basic unupgraded star card. Oh yeah, did I not mention the cards can be upgraded? You do that with crafting parts too. How do you get crafting parts you ask? Challenges or loot boxes of course. Basically if you saved enough credits to unlock the characters you wanted you likely wouldn't have the right star cards to make them as effective as they ought to be. Conversely if you spent all your time and credits getting the right star cards you probably wouldn't have enough to unlock the characters you wanted. Unless you have some of the game's third currency. As well as credits and crafting parts, Swarbat 2 has a third currency, crystals, which can also be acquired through completing challenges or buying them for real world money from the in-game store. One penny shy of 100 Yankee dollars worth would get you 12,000 crystals, enough for approximately 60 trooper loot boxes, less if you were buying Starfighter or Hero loot crates. Whatever selection of crates you chose to spend your crystals on, however, it was still a faster path to many more credits and crafting parts than you might acquire otherwise. In response to the uproar over this perceived locking away of content behind a grind of a progression system, EA and DICE drastically slashed the price of hero characters. Now, instead of costing 60,000 credits, Luke and Vader only cost 15,000, a reduction of 75%. Leia, Chewie, Iden Versio, Palpatine and others have also had their unlock costs reduced. By now you've no doubt noticed I've been referring to some of these concepts in the past tense, and not just the hero costs. Within a week of the whole kerfuffle kicking off, EA completely removed the crystal currency from the game after a late night phone call from Disney. Not just anyone at Disney either, it wasn't the faceless head of a legion of lawyers calling another faceless head of a legion of lawyers, nor was it Disney's head of consumer products and interactive media Jimmy Pitaro calling, say, EA's chief marketing officer Chris Brizzo. Though Mr. Pataro did reportedly send a letter to EA outlining Disney's concerns at how they were handling the game and the negative public perception of it. Nope, it was none other than Robert A. Iger, chairman and CEO of the Walt Disney Company himself. The Emperor's coming here? A man second only in Disney authority to the cryogenically preserved severed head of Walt Disney himself. Calling EA's own CEO, Andrew Tannhauser Gate Wilson, with what were very likely some very stern words indeed stern enough to force EA into removing all real money microtransactions from Star Wars Battlefront 2 a scant handful of hours before the game's global release. Not weeks, not days, hours. You know, I'd give my left bollock to have been a fly on the wall during that particular exchange. Now let's not kid ourselves that Disney did this out of the kindness of their corporate heart. It all comes down to optics, the way in which an event or course of action is perceived by the public. By the time Bob Iger made his fateful call to Andrew Wilson, the whole progression slash microtransaction debacle had seeped out from the gaming press into mainstream news outlets like the BBC and CNN. Although I'd like to hold up this particular image for your consideration as the proverbial proton torpedo in the exhaust port of EA's microtransaction system. It is technically incorrect of course, Disney may hold the rights to Star Wars, but they're not directly making Battlefront 2, or any other video games in the foreseeable future, and yet and yet, just mwah, as propaganda it's a fucking masterpiece, expertly crafted for widespread sharing on Facebook for maximum button pushing and knee jerk parental outrage. It doesn't matter that Disney aren't the ones making the game, Battlefront 2 is Star Wars and in the public consciousness Star Wars is Disney. So a whiff of anything that could be seen to even vaguely resemble gambling pedal to underage kids is not something Disney wants associated with Star Wars. Certainly not with The Last Jedi coming to a cinema near you in under a month's time. So EA's usual tactic of just waiting for all the fuss to die down was absolutely not an option. And as such, they've now learned the hard way that A, you do not fuck with the mouse, and B, you especially do not fuck with the franchise the mouse spent $4 billion to acquire. Unless you're the Los Angeles Times, there are always exceptions. Anyhow, after this stern call from the CEO of Disney, during which, according to one anonymous source, threats were made to pull the Star Wars video game license from them entirely, EA issued the following statement, or rather they got Oscar Gabrielson of DICE to issue it in their stead. In a nutshell, all real money microtransactions including the purchase of crystals have now been temporarily removed and all progression in Swarbat 2 will be made entirely through gameplay. Although until the game's progression system is rebalanced around not requiring loot boxes, getting your mitts on Luke or Vader will now take even longer. Still, it's a victory of sorts. It's definitely up there with, for example, blowing up a technological terror capable of destroying an entire planet. But then we all know what came after that, don't we folks? 
although two new developments at the 11th hour might put a bit of a dampener on that. It was reported this week that the Gaming Commission of Belgium, land of expert chocolatiers Hercule Poirot and Jean-Claude Van Damme, ruled that loot boxes should be considered a form of gambling, allegedly stating, and I quote, the mixing of money and addiction is gambling. Although it since turned out that was merely an advisory statement and not an actual ruling. A small but important detail that was lost in the mire of Google Translate. Nevertheless, Belgium's Minister of Justice, Kern Geens, I think that's how you pronounce it, agreed with it, saying, Mixing gambling and gaming, especially at a young age, is dangerous for the mental health of the child. Mr Geens also wants in-game real money purchases with randomised results, not necessarily all microtransactions, banned from video games. He admits, however, that such a process could take some time since Belgium would have to take the matter to the rest of the European Union, which itself would have the knock-on effect of bringing loot boxes to the attention of other governments, meaning more work for legal experts and possibly some sleepless nights for executives. Within hours of this news from Belgium, Hawaii House of Representatives member Chris Lee released this video titled EA Predatory Behaviour Announcement. This game is a Star Wars themed online casino designed to lure kids into spending money. It's a trap. To be more exact, the video had been found and shared online before the state of Hawaii could issue an official statement to accompany it. So Representative Chris Lee popped onto Reddit with some additional clarification, with this section being of particular interest. While we are stepping up to act in Hawaii, we have also been in discussions with our counterparts in a number of other states who are also considering how to address this issue. Change is difficult at the federal level, but states can, and are, taking action. So EA probably won't be getting Christmas cards from Valve and Blizzard this year. The wheels of government aren't known for turning particularly fast, of course, so in the meantime, it's possible we'll soon see Swarbat 2's microtransactions return in some form. As for what form that will be, we can only speculate on that for now. EA might bring them back around the end of the year completely unchanged, to wring as much cash as possible from everyone getting a copy for Christmas, or they could wait till the new year and reintroduce them as purely cosmetic ones, such as alternate outfits for existing heroes. There's certainly a precedent for that. Just as there's a precedent for EA and DICE being able to turn the whole thing around again. For Honor and Diablo 3 are but two examples of games that successfully revamped their progression or microtransaction systems to be more palatable to their players. But in those examples, neither Blizzard nor Ubisoft had potential government regulation looming like a shadow over everything they'd built. Which they do now! All thanks to the predatory overzealousness of one publisher that thought the license for Star Wars was a license to milk its fans like factory farm dairy cows. Nice one, EA. So there you have it, the sorry saga of the Star Wars Battlefront sequel summarised. Although it's just occurred to me that equating EA with the Galactic Empire and their critics with the Rebel Alliance was perhaps too simplistic, unreasonable and unfair of me. After all, EA has left a trail of ruined game studios in its wake, been twice voted worst company in America, and had class action lawsuits brought against it for unpaid overtime and violating federal antitrust laws, amongst many other misdeeds. Whereas the Empire did nothing wrong. That's all for this episode of Pixel Burn. If you liked it, then please do let me know by clicking the requisite buttons down below and letting your friends, your family, your loved ones and Lord Vader himself know as well. At the very least, I hope you found it tolerable. But before I go, I'd like to give a special thanks to DJ Slope of Slope's Game Room for the lovely shout out in his latest 10 Amazing Gaming YouTubers Under 5000 Subs video. Special thanks also to the one and only Guru Larry for recommending me to him in the first place and generally being an all round bloody good bloke. Meanwhile, till next time, as always, may the force be with you.